I think uh, the UAE is a very dynamic uh, country in itself, right? Uh, it's attracting people from all over the world. Uh, everyone wants to be in Dubai um, because of the, the glamour, the technology, the big tower, the buildings and the entertainment and all of these things. And I think as well, the, the vision of um, what the country leaders had in that time, they knew that oil would run hard. They needed to find something to compensate um, for that. And I think they've done a great job in um, changing and bringing digital transformation into the region and to be try to be the new Silicon Valley. I think they are addressing it. I think uh, the, the local leadership are, it's taken them time. The population is very small, right? So you don't have a large population like India, who's now the biggest population in the world. Um, so I think it took them time to uh, co-create and co-develop that and get the interest in the universities. I mean, they've built beautiful universities uh, like the Technology University of Abu Dhabi. They, so it has taken time for them to get and progress. And now you're getting a lot of these Emiratis that are starting to graduate now. They've gone through these programs. Now they need a place, but they don't have experience. But there's no one to give them experience or um, an opportunity um, to, to come into the workplace. So they go abroad. They don't stay here. Um, and I think it's, it's not just a government thing that needs to happen. I think it's a local company and culture that needs to change. They need to be involved in those programs. So the government needs to work hand in hand with the, um, with the businesses, also probably give incentives to the businesses to say, hey, if you start up a, a, an initiative to hire students, these are the type of things that we will work together and help with to co-create, co-develop and, and probably get certain, um, I don't know, incentives uh, that you could get um, from these type of initiatives. I think that's still immature. I still think that will come. And I think if we start to socialize that and uh, we start to also talk a lot more to the universities because universities can also uh, um, help with the socialization, right? And to also communicate that. But if there's no talking from other part parties, it's not gonna go anywhere. Again, if you look at what's in the curriculum, curriculum's all about AI. Right? Everybody wants to go and study AI. Uh, everyone wants to become a developer. So those are the two main topics that you look at when you look at the university's curriculum today. Um, it, it is like, a, I, I would say it's, it's the flavor of, of the month in a way. Um, and um, we are in our own way, in our own demise, diluting um, in directing our next generation in the wrong path, I would say. Um, because it's not only about AI, it's not only about development. Yes, those are skills that we need to develop, yes, in the future. But there's still a lot of things of the ecosystem that's been left and forgotten, um, which I don't think uh, is really doing anybody justice. And it will hurt us because now we'll be a flood of AI people in the industry, it'll be a flood of developers. Um, like, I don't know if you really uh, remember in the past, we had very little lawyers, very little doctors. The universities went crazy and everyone became a doctor, everyone became a, a lawyer. Now you've got lawyers and doctors without jobs, right? And you probably will see that where there's gonna be a flood of AI people, a flood of developers going into the market and we're sort of forcefully creating something and hoping there's going to be a demand but no one really knows what the demand really is because there's not enough research probably that's backing that up to say and help universities to say well, yes how do we balance this like my um, uh, colleague in the panel was talking about the imbalance there is definitely an imbalance um, uh, and not enough research being done to understand what do we as humans need to be helping guiding the universities to help uh, nurture our um, um, children. Uh, I had the same question about a week ago. If you remember 15 years ago, 
when hyperscalers came about, everyone was going to lose a job. I was one of them. I thought I would be out of the IT industry in about the next two years, because that's what we were all told. We were all brainwashed that the hyperscalers are coming in, everyone's going to the cloud, there'll be no need for any IT people anymore. Did that happen? Absolutely not. It actually created more jobs. It created new jobs. Um, new jobs were created out of it. And you're starting to see a big drive now in the space. And I think, in my mind, yes, some legacy jobs will probably be redundant, but I think a lot more jobs will be created out of it. Always, and I think it's probably the, the um, I, I remember watching a, a tech ed um, uh, talk about um, that our educational system has brainwashed us to not take risks and has brainwashed us to think in a certain way and that our academic system was doctrinated in a way on the way we should see the world, which is incorrect. And, and that's all been disrupted now. And I think it's the same thing about AI. I don't believe uh, that we should be scared. I think we need to learn how to um, coexist. How do we hybrid ourselves and be part of the AI journey? Yeah, so I think what was really successful, if you saw in the cloud business, that was the same question that came up 15 years ago. There were no women that were in IT 15 years ago. Then there were a lot of initiatives that started up in um, uh, IT for Women, initiatives that popped up all over the world and to create communities for women, to bring all women together and to socialize it and to create awareness about this technology, about this industry, about what women can do and the contribution that women can bring. And they can bring a hell of a lot of contribution. Um, that has been misled and mis probably communicated or socialized incorrectly because of certain doctrines, certain mindsets, certain cultures um, that still is re relevant today, unfortunately. But I think we're starting to see a huge shift and a huge change purely because um, there is a socialization that is happening. And I think the more women stand up and the more that women can actually bring communities together, I'd love to see more women IT conferences. Why isn't there? I haven't seen any here in the UAE, right? It's great IT conferences, but where's there an IT women's conference? Which you actually see now happening in Europe. You're seeing that in the US. That is what I believe needs to happen here in the UAE. If I remember coming into this, uh, into this region about 15 years ago, it was men dominated, mainly men. Uh, I hardly saw women uh, in this industry for many years. And then I would say in the last 10 years, it grew significantly. Microsoft being a big driver in that space uh, where they hired a lot of women because of the culture that they brought from the US and they drive to encourage women to work in the, in the IT sector. I think that helped a lot. So you start to see a lot of these international companies influencing the local uh, culture. I think it's been uh, quite interesting um, and very exciting to hear. This is the first time I've come to a conference that's been pretty much predominantly panel driven from morning to night. Typically you go to a conference, they'll have once off uh, panels and jots and jabs and stuff like that. And actually this becomes very for me, it's been very engaging, very personal, and, um, and it actually gets to the point of certain things that need to be addressed and people want to hear and want to talk about and to discuss. And I think there's not enough of that. Uh, people don't talk enough because it's always been a one-way communication. And I think this conference has been really an eye-opener for me because it was very engaging, very personal, and also touches on very... Uh, important topics that never get addressed um, outside and a lot of people want to hear and want to hear other people's views about how they're dealing with those challenges and um, and there were very interesting and very complicated challenges and things that people brought up 
especially around AI and the topic you asked uh, about how is AI going to disrupt our world. Um, it's been a topic on every single uh, panel that I've heard. That topic came up every single time. People kept pushing on how is AI going to disrupt us? How is it going to change the way we work? Um, and so forth. So I, I think that resonated quite a lot for me uh, in a big way.